Well, Syrian President Bashar al-Assad has an unlikely defender, Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard. At some personal risk, the Hawaii Democrat recently made a secret seven-day trip to Syria and Lebanon, where she met Assad along with many civilians and clergy and soldiers caught up in the conflict there. When she came back, she denounced the previous administration's efforts to depose Assad as both illegal and harmful to the Syrian people and American interests. What did she see there? Congresswoman Gabbard is with us tonight. Congresswoman, thanks a lot for joining us. Thank you very much. So you met with Assad. Not many people can say that. Um, and Donald Trump, of course, at the same time has been emphasizing his plan to take on ISIS directly. We're not exactly sure what that means. But based on your conversation with President Assad, do you think the Assad government would welcome an alliance with the U.S. military to fight ISIS? Uh, first of all, in your intro, I just want to make a correction. I'm not a defender of Assad. I didn't go to Syria to meet with Assad. It was not even part of the plan initially. I went oh. there to visit with the Syrian people, to uh, share uh, the care, the, the love, and the aloha that the people of our country have for them, and to see the situation on the ground for myself. Uh, when the opportunity presented itself to meet with President Assad, I took it simply because I believe that if we profess to care for the Syrian people, if we want to end the suffering for them, we have to be willing to meet with whomever we need to uh, in order to accomplish that. And, and that was much of what I discussed with him in that meeting, was how do we get to a place where we can end this war, where uh, the terrorists in his country can be defeated, terrorists like al-Qaeda and ISIS and all of these other groups that are working with them, uh, and make it so that the Syrian people are able to, to move on with their lives, to make it so that the Syrian refugees who have fled Syria to not only the Middle East, but Europe and other parts of the world, are able to return home. So, I mean, but what do you say about U.S. policy? I mean, you, you spoke to him. Again, not many people have done that recently. Is he open to some sort of alliance with the United States, assuming the Trump administration is open to that as well? What did, what did Assad say to you? Uh, I think he is looking uh, for what our president, new president, Donald Trump, would see as a shared interest with him, with Syria. Uh, and the shared interest that he has seen is this commitment to defeating ISIS, this commitment to defeating uh, this terrorist threat that not only uh, exists for the people of Syria, but it exists for the Middle East and for the world. And if uh, this threat continues to grow, uh, it's something, again, that becomes uh, even more real than it is already for the American people. Now, why, why do you think that the entire foreign policy establishment in Washington, really on a bipartisan basis, and certainly the Obama administration, put toppling the Assad regime at the, at the top of the priority list? You know, it's unfortunate, but it continues uh, a track record of foreign policy decisions that the United States has made, even in the recent past, beginning with Iraq in toppling the uh, Saddam Hussein, uh, with Libya in toppling Gaddafi, uh, and now in Syria. Uh, to topple but what's the thinking uh, behind it? I mean, you've thought about this. What, why Assad? I mean, I'm not, it's not a defense it's, of Assad it's or his brutality. It's this idea that the United him? States should be the world's police and that the United States should say, okay, here's a bad guy. We're going to go and topple this bad guy without thinking through what the consequences of those decisions what are. What would they be if Assad were toppled? And it, doesn't, it looks less likely every day, but let's say that happened. Who would lead Syria, do you think? This is the key question, Tucker, is... The reality on the ground is that the strongest force are groups like al-Nusra, which is al-Qaeda, are groups like ISIS. There are many different uh, radical jihadist groups who are fighting there, all with this same goal of toppling the Assad government, knowing that they are the most effective, right. they are the most powerful, they will take over. So not only will life for the Syrian people be a living hell, they will, uh, religious minorities will face a genocide they will pose a great threat to the region and a great well, threat to the and, world. And you, you have some video. I think your husband may have shot this while you're over there. And in, in one clip, I want to show you interview a Christian clergyman in Syria, of course, as an ancient Christian community. And this is his. He's view. actually in Aleppo. In Aleppo. Yes. Wow. Okay. Here it is. We are not having rebels. We have terrorists. Yeah. All who are modern people who think in the terms of this age. Are, are targeted by them. They want this country to be bad. They want us uh, not to be uh, improved and developed as a community. Uh, and their plan is to have an Islamic state in this country. Mm -hmm. And they didn't read the history. They didn't know that Christianity was spread out from this country, yeah. from Antioch. 
Interesting. It's a complicated story there, but the Christian community does seem on one side. But if, if you want to see more of that, unfortunately we're out of time, but go to our Facebook page. We're going to put that up. How long is it? Uh, it's about five minutes long, and, and this reverend is talking about this. The rubble behind him is actually his church yep. um, that was uh, completely destroyed. I just want to say really quick, the, the call that I heard from the Syrian people was for the United States to stop arming these terrorists, to right. stop providing this support. And that is exactly what my legislation does. The Stop Arming Terrorist Bill will make it so that we are no longer fueling and providing support to militias and groups who are working directly with al-Qaeda in Syria to try to overthrow this government, resulting in strengthening right. al-Qaeda and increasing the suffering of the Syrian people. It's, it's horrific. And killing a lot of Christians. Sounds reasonable. Thank you, Congressman. Good Thank you, Tucker. You.